65 degrees, unseasonably warm. It is windy. Chance for rain later today. Eagles start with a football. And a terrible kickoff to start by Nick Folk. And Philadelphia will start at their own 40. Well, there are so many storylines to talk about within this game. If you want to talk about Dallas, you think about Wade Phillips getting a semi vote of confidence from owner Jerry Jones during the week or for Philadelphia. As you look at their backs and receivers, you look at their offensive line, the two tackles, Thomas and Runyon are free agents to be. And what's the future of Donovan McNabb in a Philadelphia Eagles uniform or Brian Dawkins, who we talked about earlier. But right now, what's on the plate? is an opportunity to go to the playoffs pretty remarkable that last weekend both of these teams basically thought that they were going to be eliminated after their games from playoff contention the week came along Dallas knew that this game was of importance and just a few moments ago the Eagles found out the same first play is nearly picked off and a good jump by Terrence Newman stepped in front of Deshaun Jackson and We'll see a lot, Troy, of Terrence Newman and Deshaun Jackson hooked up during the course of this day. Yeah, Terrence Newman here over the last few ball games, he has gone with whoever the Cowboys feel is the fastest receiver of an offense's unit, not necessarily the best receiver. Therefore, in this game, Terrence Newman, for the most part, will be on Deshaun Jackson. Newman, a former track star at Kansas State, he can run. On second and ten, McNabb. Throws Selleck the tight end wide open 20 yards and a first down for Philadelphia well the Eagles start out they know that they've got to be able to protect the Cowboys lead the lead the NFL in sacks getting pressure on the quarterback Donovan has time and a good route by tight end Selleck he looks to the inside gets Keith Davis Keith Davis looks like he's hobbled a little bit but he went to the inside, got Keith Davis turned, and then went back out to the sideline in an easy completion. L.J. Smith is not active. The usual starter at tight end has an injured shoulder. Play action. McNabb gets protection and then overshoots everybody. There was some contact with Terrence Newman and Deshaun Jackson. No flag as that ball landed out of the back of the end zone, second and ten. This is an offensive line when you think protection for McNabb that's allowed only 22 sacks this season. They don't allow one here today. That would tie a Philadelphia record for fewest allowed in a season. Group up front did it for the Eagles back in 1981. First running play, and it's Brian Westbrook picking up three. And it'll be third and long. Andy Reid, Troy, week after week, has to answer questions about his running game, throwing the ball too much. It certainly seemed to be the case last week against the Redskins, and he started this game with three straight throws. Yeah, but I think that it affected Andy Reid. I, I think he honestly looked back at last week's game against Washington and realized that he let that one get away from him in that they didn't stick to what allowed them to have success the previous three weeks. Prior to that, they'd been running the ball on average about 40 times a game. Last week, only 16 runs. And they, they made, him very, made him very defensible there by Washington. Third down and seven now for McNabb who has to step up and the pass is I guess caught and fumbled as Dallas gets back on top. The officials do not say incomplete. They say catch and fumble by Westbrook and Dallas takes over at their own 25. Yeah that's what it looked to me was it that Westbrook had made the catch. Now let's just take a closer look. He has it and then turns. It looks to me like he has possession of the ball before it gets knocked out of his hands. And Brady James, the one coming in to make the play, looked like Nick Cole might have had an opportunity to get on that one, but was unable to. Terrence Newman ends up on top of the football, and Dallas does indeed have it. No challenge flag from Andy Reid. And he tucks it away. A new audience joins us. This has turned into a playoff game here in Philadelphia. First possession for Dallas. It's Tashard Choice picking up two. 
if you did just join us Philadelphia started with a football at their own 40 as a Nick full kickoff went out of bounds then moved it down into Dallas territory we're on the edge of field goal range and then moments ago Ryan Westbrook made the catch over the middle secured it fumbled it on the hit by Brady James and Dallas has it now second and eight. A blitz underneath it's Witten to the 30 a gain of three third and five coming up and here is the Cowboy offense and overall the ninth ranked offense in the NFL. Yeah, and we just saw Jason Witten make that catch. I'm I'm interested in seeing how long he'll be able to play, or at least how effective he'll be. When he caught a touchdown in last week's loss to the Baltimore Ravens, when he walked off the field, I thought that was the last we had seen of Jason Witten. Not only is he playing then with the bad ankle, but he's still recovering from a broken rib that he had earlier in the year. Third down and five. Blitz pass behind Creighton fourth down. So a three and out from Tony Romo in this Dallas offense. And I'll tell you what, Jim Johnson on those last two plays, I think they got a lot from watching that game last week with the Baltimore Ravens and some of the things that they were able to have some success doing. And that was moving people around on the defensive front, bringing linebackers, getting pressure in Romo's face. They were able to do that on that last possession. Good defensive stop there. Pulaski will punt it. Good punt with the win to Sean Jackson, the rookie from the 25. Room to run. And a good start for this second possession for the Eagles. What a beautiful night in Philadelphia. In one of the great stadiums in this country, Lincoln Financial Field. First down, Eagles at their own 46. Westbrook picks up two. Ryan Westbrook had over 100 total yards and three touchdowns in the first meeting between these two clubs. Terrell Owens has had success this year and last year playing with the Cowboys against his former team, the Eagles. Dallas just went three and out. Second and eight for Philadelphia. First down Eagles nine yards and a fresh set of downs for Corral Buckalter. Well, I really think them sticking to the running game and trying to be as balanced as possible is going to be the best thing that the Eagles can do. You watch Deshaun Jackson on the outside. You know the rookie who had a few drops coming off a tough week this past week after he dropped a game tying touchdown last week against the Redskins doing a good job. Well this Dallas defense lost Roy Williams early Pat Watkins and now Keith Davis needs a lot of help to get off the field so first year player Trey Battle is in its safety and a handoff is to Westbrook first down inside the 30 to the 27 a 16 yard run by Brian Westbrook Tell you what John Runyon in his 13th year it's amazing that he's been able to suit up and play each week he's battling through a lot you're going to see him right here right tackle he collapses it down right there and then Westbrook comes right off of his block and then of course you've got Brent Selleck also getting his guy and creating a nice lane there for Brian Westbrook Runyon making his 192nd consecutive start and that's now four straight running plays from Andy Reid in this offense as Kyle Eckel picks up two. Well, he did say during the week he was going to run it every play, and then he tagged that with Merry Christmas. So <laughs> he's so tired of hearing about it. But to be honest, and, and I know you think a lot of Andy Reid, there are times where even if the numbers don't back up what he's saying, he'll say, oh, no, you know, we're, we're, we've always been a balanced team. The, the bottom line is they have not been. They have not been, and they, they certainly were not last week. And I know in talking with Cowboy coaches, they sure had hoped that the Eagles would come out just throwing it today. McNabb throws low for Westbrook and you can you see some of the wrappers and debris flying around this field it looks like the wind has really picked up now over the last five minutes or so and it's third and eight 
Yeah, that's always the big factor for quarterbacks throwing the football. You and I were down on the field earlier, and it was blowing pretty good at that time. Certainly nothing like what they got in Buffalo earlier today, but still, it's a factor. And you can deal with snow, you can deal with rain. But when you're trying to throw the ball with, with the wind or even against the wind, the ball does some funny things that you can't control. Third down and eight. Five-man rush. McNabb steps up, gets away, and will slide down short of first down yardage. A three-yard run by McNabb, and now the field goal unit, and David Akers will trot on for Philadelphia. Well, I would say overall, I think Dallas has got to be pleased that, you know, all they're giving up here potentially is three points. They open up the game, they kick the ball out of bounds, give the ball to the Eagles on the 40-yard line, don't give up any points then. And then with good field position again, the Eagles not really to capitalize with more than just a field goal attempt. 40 yard try by Akers. Who is now 31 of 34 in his career against the Cowboys. The Eagles get the 40 yard field goal from David Akers. And you see at the bottom of team record 30. One field goals for Akers who really struggled during the middle part of this season. He's picked it back up. Marty Mornenweg and McNabb talk about that last possession and what they plan to do. And now Dallas will get it. They've run three offensive plays. And they'll start this possession at their own 20 as Pac-Man takes a knee. And now dealing with the elements. Wind blowing the football around as the Cowboys will start at their own 20 down by three. No sign of Marion Barber yet. It is dislocated little toe on his right foot. Crowds in it. Tashard Choice gets it. Runs into Akeem Jordan and fights for three. Second and seven. Quick throw T.O. And the former Eagle bounces off Sheldon Brown. And he's brought down a yard and a half shy of a first down. You know, it was a good job by Tony Romo recognizing that they did not put anybody out on Terrell Owens. And by that, I mean they didn't line up anybody right on him. Typically in the slot, you're going to see. And then they comes off, and it's Dawkins, and they hand it to him. But look at the, look at the guys who pursue to get there. There's four green helmets. Right there surrounding Terrell Owens, and that's going to be the real key, and Jim Johnson knows that. I mean, when you talk about a guy who knows a receiver, Jim Johnson had an opportunity for two years to watch this guy in practice and then watch him on Sundays, and he knows what has to be done. Handoff is to Choice, and he has enough for a first down. I think it almost it gets lost in what's gone on with this Dallas team because of the play of Tashard Choice, who's been very good since taking over and now Flozell Adams is down. Very good since taking over from Marion Barber, but take Tashard Choice out of it. That is one of the biggest weapons any team has in the NFL, Marion Barber, who's been virtually a non-factor since Thanksgiving. Yeah, I think even like what you said, Joe, Ch Tashard Choice has done everything that they could have hoped that he would do over the last three games, but Marion Barber just really brings the emotion to this offensive unit. Quick throw by Romo, and he hits his tight end, Martellus Bennett. Brought down by Dawkins, a gain of six. We look at this defense, and a defense that is directed by Jim Johnson has been flying around. They've allowed an average of just over 11 points per game in the month of December. Very good on third down, and Jim Johnson loves to blitz. And so this offensive line for the Cowboys will be tested here tonight. Well, and his defense has just gotten better and better with each week. And they're an undersized group up front. And Dallas looks at it like, well, maybe our size will be to our advantage. But they didn't run the ball very well in week two against the Eagles either. And so far in this game, they haven't run it very well either. And off is to choice, and he's short of a first down. Parker made the play a gain of three and it will be fourth down and a little less than a yard rather third down I beg your pardon and so now third down and one as Jaquay Parker made that play so third and one not fourth down with 540 and counting left and there is Jason Garrett a highly paid offensive coordinator who has taken some hits here in 2008. 
Yeah, it's a little tough for the second time around. You know, last year he was everybody's darling, and, and this year it's been a little tougher, but I still think he's done a heck of a job. Joyce has a first down for Dallas as he picks up three. Now this offensive line for the Cowboys is missing Kyle Kozar, who played in only three games this year at left guard. Then Montre Holland, after Corey Proctor struggled, took over, had two starts, looked good, but now he's out with a foot and ankle problem. So Corey Proctor is back in there and making his 10th start overall, protecting Romo. Barber in the game. They reverse to T.O. Gets around Cole. And Owens out of bounds at midfield. A run of seven yards for the former Philadelphia Eagle. And generally those types of plays don't work real well against the Philadelphia Eagle defense. Because they're so disciplined, they're so well coached, that the players typically stay in their lanes and they do a great job of gap control and a great job of containment. But Trent Cole got a little aggressive and wanted to chase that one down from the backside, and that's what allowed T.O. then to get on the edge. Second and three. Toss to Barber running right. Gets a block, has a first down for Dallas. And the Cowboys are showing that they can run the ball against this Philadelphia defense which has been outstanding defending against the run the last four games. Yeah, you watch Quentin Michael here now. This is a run blitz here. He's going to hit the gap. He's thinking run inside downhill between the tackles, but instead the Cowboys run the toss. They're out to the weak side with Marion Barber. A good call against what the defense was trying to do and a nice game. The number six ranked run defense. Are the Eagles first down Dallas quick throw off the left hand of Creighton and after the juggle he can't hang on that play was there as well and Creighton and Romo couldn't hook up yeah I think that whether you're talking about Terrell Owens or Patrick Creighton or Roy Williams it doesn't matter if you give those guys free access off the line they're going to be able to get in the seams and more times than not Tony Romo is going to be able to put it on him. And you know, we had a chance to visit with Jim Johnson, and you got to mix it up. But what he would really like to do in this game, both against Roy Williams as well as Terrell Owens, he would like to get physical with those two at the line of scrimmage. Tenth play of this drive. Another running play. It's Marion Barber. And a gain of two. Broderick Bunkley, who has played very well up front defensively for Jim Johnson, made the tackle. I'll tell you, this run defense is, has really been what has impressed me the most in watching them all season long. And it was a group that was good against the run last year as well. A few years ago, they struggled in that area. It, it had more to do with just not tackling very well. But they've been a hard team to run against all year, especially here over about the last six games. Third down and eight. Quick set up and throw, and Witten is left alone. Witten hops out of bounds with a Cowboy first down at the Philadelphia 24. A catch and run of 17 yards. You know, a nice design, a real simple design offensively. Every, every team that runs football runs this play. And you're going to see Asante Samuel, he just jumps the slant. And because Brian Dawkins is coming on the blitz, he then turns Jason Witten loose in the flat. And I don't know if Brian Dawkins expected Jason Witten to be blocking, but it was certainly his man in coverage. Three third down conversions on this drive for Dallas. Roy Williams dropped it. And Asante Samuel was there for Philadelphia if he caught it. So second down and 10 and we look at some of the early game headlines Minnesota got the last second victory on a long well field goal they clinched the NFC North Carolina has a first round by the number two seed as they got a late field goal to win at 
New Orleans and Detroit. It happened. They lost to Green Bay in an 0 and 16 season. Creighton makes the catch. And he's to the 15 yard line, a yard shy of the first down. Third and one coming up. You know what the Eagles are doing is they're just so committed to getting pressure on Tony Romo. They're going to bring him right here. That that is what allows Patrick Creighton then to get a free release off the line of scrimmage. And once he gets the ball in his hands, then you've just got to make sure you make the tackle. And Brian Dawkins does that, but not until after there's a pretty nice gain on the play. Third down and one. They fake the handoff. Romo throws to Roy Williams. They ask him to get the first down, and he can't. Joselio Hansen made the play for the Eagles. You know, Tony had some time in the pocket, and I think Roy Williams was saying, don't throw it to me. There's a defender right on me. But the secondary did such a nice job of covering everyone else. You see Hansen there. He's right on Roy Williams, waiting to see what Romo's going to do. That's a good job tackling a big guy in the open field. And so now Nick Folk will try from 37. Good snap, good hold, and the kick is perfect. Certainly an impressive drive put together by Dallas over eight minutes off the clock. And then Folk was good from 37. It's a 3 3 game. First kickoff from number six went out of bounds. This one hangs high. And Demps bobbled it. And gives Philadelphia a decent starting field position out across their own 30. And now we welcome you inside our broadcast booth. I'm Joe. That's Troy. And uh, I think the Cowboys just flexed a little muscle with their offensive line and proved that they could run the ball if they had to against the Eagles. Yeah, because as we've talked about, I mean, this is not an easy team to try to move the football against. I, I like what I'm seeing right now. I mean, it's early in this game, certainly. A lot of things that are going to happen. Still a lot of football left to be played, but you know, this is a playoff game, and both of these teams realize that, and so a little bit of a feeling out process, a little bit like two boxers going at it right here, and you know, as they get a little bit more settled in and some of the anxiousness goes away, I think we'll start seeing some of the bigger plays that we're accustomed to seeing from these two teams. Inside handoff to Westbrook, and Brian picks up two and a half. Westbrook at Dallas on the 15th of September had the three touchdowns. And was certainly left wondering why he didn't get a chance to run the ball more last week in that 10 3 loss at Washington. One of the real good guys from Major League Baseball is in attendance here from the world champion Philadelphia Phillies, Jimmy Rollins. Shortstop and leadoff hitter and the catalyst for that offense under Charlie Manuel. So they'll get their rings at the start of 2009. Will the Eagles get to the postseason and if they do how far will they go It's second and seven in a 3 3 game the fake on the handoff and the pass down the sideline overthrown is Greg Lewis third and eight hey, right now the Eagles are doing a good job up front in terms of giving Donovan McNabb some time to throw you know, I think you go back to last week's game and that that loss to the Washington Redskins clearly they were disappointed that they were unable to score a touchdown in that game but looking at it you know the receivers were they just did not do a real good job of creating a lot of separation and a lot of the plays that they've been able to make have been when Donovan McNabb has been able to get outside the pocket and then allow those receivers to freelance a little bit. McNabb steps up slides along the line and finds a receiver for a first down and more that's Buckhalter. Corral Buckhalter is down inside the 10. And this 
is just what I was talking about. You're going to see Donovan McNabb. He's looking downfield, doesn't really feel that he's got anything, gets pressure, steps up, and then it's just a scramble drill, and it's a matter of Pharrell Buckhalter making a move and finding himself open, and then Donovan McNabb being able to get the ball into his hands. You know, time after time, when you think about the big plays that the Eagles have had, They've come more off of Donovan creating those plays with his feet and then finding an open receiver. A career long 59 yards on that reception by Carell Buckhalter. Play selection for Andy Reid has been split. 50 50, seven runs, seven passes. Carell Buckhalter with a career long 59 yard catch and run to set up first and goal from the six. Eagles. Have their first red zone appearance in this game. They're two for their last 12. Westbrook is brought down short of the goal line. And you bring up a good point, Joe, because I, I really feel that this drive right here is extremely important on what's going to happen the rest of this ball game. And what I mean by that is because of the fact that they have not been very good in the red zone, as you have said, the last 12 opportunities they've had, they've only scored two touchdowns, were not good last week to get here. They really need to come away with a touchdown. Now they're doing it against a defense that has been awfully good this year in the red zone themselves. It's McNabb keeping it. No, no, no. no signal yet. McNabb is toward the top of that pile. And so far he has been marked short. Yeah, I mean, you get down in here, there's never a conclusive shot that shows whether or not the ball crossed the plane. But, you know, you think back to that game against Chicago, which, you know, is just as important a loss in keeping them from getting into the playoffs before this game came about. And I think they've got to go for it even on fourth down if they don't make it here on third down. I, I think it's extremely important for their psyche to punch this one in. Still no signal yet. Looked like he got in. Touchdown. <laughs> well, you talk about that Chicago Bears game in particular. Brian Westbrook was not available. He was in the backfield here, and fans were wondering, well, you've got a big quarterback. Donovan McNabb let him pound it in against the Cowboys here in a game they need to win to get into the playoffs. It's McNabb who carries it for his second touchdown of the year. I think when you've got a quarterback like Donovan, a big physical guy, I, I always think that that's the best approach, and it's the quickest way to cross the goal line. 10-3 Philadelphia. The fans here serenade the Eagles with fly. Eagles fly. Brian Dawkins leading the cheer as Miles Austin on the return gets to the sideline and has a good return out shy of the 40. They're going to mark him at the 38 down to the field and Pam Oliver. Well, Joe Troy, I think we all examined the field before the game and it looked in very good shape. But since I've seen two offensive linemen for the Dallas Cowboys and tight end Jason Witten change the spikes on their shoes for whatever reason, they feel like they needed to go longer on the spikes for traction purposes. All right, Pam, thank you. Yeah, the grass is about as thick as you and I have ever seen it here at the end of the year. Yeah, and I think that's why they went to the longer spike because normally this time of year there's not much grass out there and it's, you know, just hard dirt. So you go with a much shorter spike and that's what they were anticipating. I was surprised. It's as good a shape as I've seen this field this time of year in a long, long time. They fake the handoff and the pass for Witten makes a one handed catch but loses yardage. First guy there was Samuel a loss of one is Jason Witten when his last two games against the Eagles has had 100 yard days each time lost a yard at second and 11. Jaquay Parker forcing Romo to really lay that one out there and, and a dangerous throw a close throw and a good job by Akeem Jordan being there after Samuel made the miss but you're right I had a chance to watch Jason Witten warm up and he is not right I mean he wasn't right in last week's game against the Ravens he's not at full strength he's not running and that's a huge benefit to this Eagles defense. Play 
action trying to set up a screen for Bennett and Romo wisely just throws it into his shins. Trent Cole had pressure to getting around Flozell Adams. Well, we saw Flozell a little bit earlier when he looked like he tweaked that knee and he's not moving real well. Hasn't been moving real well for, for quite a few weeks. And Trent Cole, one of the faster defensive ends coming off the edge, just really able to run right by him. If there's one thing that Flozell Adams struggles with, it's a speed rusher. If he's able to get his hands on you, typically he's pretty successful. But Trent Cole's not that type of pass rusher. He uses speed, which could present a problem throughout this game. Third down and 11, Romo throws as he backs up, and the pass incomplete. Terrell Owens and Quentin Michael both were fighting for it, and eventually it fell to the ground, pressure by Clemens in the face of Tony Romo. Well, there's no doubt that Jim Johnson is going with what he talked about. We want to get pressure on Tony Romo. If we can do that, there's going to be balls that are thrown up, and that was another throw that Tony has got to be careful with. When you think back to big games, and as I said a little earlier, generally it's who makes the fewest bad plays that goes on to win those types of games. Pulescu just got it away, and Deshaun Jackson watches it head out of bounds. The Eagles have been going with playoff beards, a lot of them up until their loss last week against the Redskins yeah, and we all kind of thought that they would shave them but I'm not surprised to see that at least Andy Reid has not I think that had they have shaved them it would have been admitting that that their season was over but they were still holding out hope and the beards worked for him this week it's a rugged look at Andy Reid <laughs> he's striving for here's Westbrook bouncing it and Brian Westbrook picks up nine and a half Well, Brian Westbrook has been banged up throughout the year last year or last week going into that game You know everybody was saying that he was as healthy as he had been all season long And then he got banged up pretty good in that game as well, but he's been effective running the football here early Westbrook's had rib injury and ankle injury a little gimpy getting off the field there at second and one Handoff is to Eckel, and he goes backward. They're going to give Eckel forward progress, if you want to call it that, to the 31, a loss of one. It'll be third and short coming up. And Kyle Eckel, he's been pretty successful when he's been given the opportunities that he's had to pick those types of yards up for first downs. Once he came into the game, I'm sure the Cowboys recognized that, well, they're going to give it to Eckel and try to run it up inside. And they did a good job shutting it down. It's third down and two. Out of the shotgun. Pressure on McNabb, and down he goes. It's Brady James. So upset that he was not named a pro bowler prior to last weekend, and he comes up with a big sack for this Dallas defense. And we've been seeing Brady James come more often here over the last half of the season, and he's been real effective. Anytime they have him in a position where they think that they can get an advantage on bringing him with the blitz, then he comes. And he's been able to get home here a lot. You know, a disappointing possession there for the Eagles. They have not had much success now on third and really short yardage situations. Ugly punt by Rocca. And it will take an Eagles roll down just inside. Well, that man may get his wish. The right combination happened early, and now if you're just joining us, you've basically tuned into a playoff game. The winner moves on. The losing team goes home. Fourth possession for the Cowboys down seven. Blitz from the Eagles, handoff is to Choice, and Choice loses two. First guy there was Bunkley, and we look at the early game headliners, and the fans here in Philadelphia should send something nice. Just get together and send something nice to Michael Bush for the job he did 
running the ball for the Raiders in their win at Tampa Bay. D'Angelo Williams has had a phenomenal season, and Michael Turner has as well, running the ball for the Atlanta Falcons. Pretty amazing, and uh, you're right. I mean, Oakland to go into that game and to be able to, to knock out the Tampa Bay Buccaneers in a must-win game for them, pretty impressive by that Raider club. Second down and 12, and a handoff to Choice, running right. Picked up a yard, Darren Howard made the play for this Eagles defense. The numbers are stunning when you look at the history for Jim Johnson, the defensive coordinator of the Eagles, and what he's been able to do against the Dallas Cowboys, the first meeting compared to the second. Trying to do it again here and turn in his usual good effort by this Philly defense and help the Eagles get into the postseason. Third and 11. Another blitz. Romo steps up and throws high for Roy Williams. Another three and out in the third and four possessions for this Dallas offense. Well, defensively, the Eagles are just so good on first down. And so what generally happens is teams are faced with third and long. And as we talk about every time we cover the Eagles, that's when Jim Johnson, you know, that's when he gets real creative and brings a lot of different looks, brings a lot of pressures. He brings the pressure again there as he has throughout this first half. And good coverage on the back end by Asante Samuel. Paul Askew punts it. Deshaun Jackson just shy of the 30. Philadelphia up by seven, and they will start at their own 29. McNabb over the middle hits the umpire. Trying to get it to Kevin Curtis, and we go back to that third down play by Dallas. They're going to see Quentin Michael, the free safety. He's going to come on the blitz, so that means everybody's locked up one-on-one. -on -one. And the last thing that a corner then can have happen is for a receiver to run by him. You're going to see the top of that route. Asante Samuel jumps the route because he saw Roy Williams chop his feet and run a very poor route. And I know that Roy Williams has talked a lot this week about not being more involved. He's got to run better routes than that if he's going to catch footballs in this league. Here is Westbrook. And Westbrook over the right side picks up two. DeMarcus Ware on the tackle. DeMarcus Ware is chasing history here today. Big number 94. He has 20 sacks on the season. He is three sacks shy of a new NFL record. And a statistic that's been thought about and tabulated officially since 1982. You know, going into last week's game against Baltimore, he needed four, and, and I really thought he'd have a good shot at it going against a Baltimore team that you, know, you thought that he'd be able to get pressure on. He got a sack early in that game, and then Baltimore made some adjustments and didn't have any more. Of course, as much as the Eagles like to throw the ball as well. Here's a pass on third down to Curtis. And a big completion in front of Pac-Man Jones of 15 yards and a first down for Philadelphia. Yeah, and I really like Kevin Curtis. And I thought that when he was out those first six games this year, that that hurt this team. And yet they were still able to be pretty productive. You know, he's one of those receivers that can, can really do it all. He's got good speed. He's got great quickness. You see the push that he was able to get on Pac-Man Jones and then come out of the route. A 15-yard completion on third down for the Eagles, and a handoff is to Westbrook, who pushes the pile to midfield. There are a lot of teams that we talk to, and in particular, offensive coordinators and people involved with different offenses around the league. They respect the athletic ability of Pac-Man Jones, but do not necessarily respect what he does as a cornerback, and that was a big completion on third and eight for 15 yards in front of him to Kevin Curtis. I think he's such a gifted athlete that there's probably been a lot of coaches over the years reluctant to really coach him up. But I think once he gets better fundamentally, then I think there's some real upside with him. Second and six. Pass complete to Deshaun Jackson. 
who had four drops in that frustrating Philadelphia loss last week against the Redskins. That was good for 12. Yeah, and I like his attitude this past week, and, and he was disappointed. He was frustrated. He didn't get the ball earlier in that game, and then obviously he had those drops, but by all indications, he was able to put that behind him and come out and have a pretty good week. He was looking forward to coming back out into this ball game and redeeming himself, if you will. And right now, Philadelphia, I tell you, this is as balanced as I've seen them. And they're doing a good job keeping Dallas on their heels. And now the team rookie record for receiving yardage for Deshaun Jackson. As McNabb goes down the middle and incomplete for Avant. Looking for a flag and he won't get it. This, by the way, is the fourth time in five possessions that the Eagles are inside Dallas territory in another look. You can see right there that, you know, Orlando Skandrick has done a good job. First year player, fifth round pick for them out of Boise State and has been called upon to play a lot this year because of some of the injuries that they had in the secondary. But just not much separation there by by Jason Avon. I know he was looking for the call. I thought it was pretty good coverage. And off to Westbrook. Not much there. Zach Thomas and Canty combined to make the stop. Hard to believe that in a game with this much on the line, the only flag that's been thrown here in the first half came on the opening kickoff that went out of bounds. <laughs> yeah, and uh, especially surprising with regards to Dallas since they lead the NFL in penalties. Been flagged 115 times to lead the NFL, and now it's third down and nine. Westbrook at the bottom of the screen. McNabb to his right. What a pass. First and goal, Deshaun Jackson. What a throw from Donovan McNabb. Well, really good job by Andy Reid and Marty Morningwig, offensive coordinator, splitting Brian Westbrook out. And what that then did was it forced them to go into single coverage on the outside and Donovan McNabb recognizes that and you've got Deshaun Jackson the rookie working against the best corner right now for the Dallas Cowboys and Terrence Newman and he runs right by him. Of course it took a perfect throw as you said Joe by Donovan McNabb to get the completion 34 yard completion to Deshaun Jackson and now Westbrook forces his way forward for a yard. Let's go back to that throw. That's about as good as it gets from number five. Well, it sure is. And, and he's had a number of these throughout his career. And he throws this ball very well. The, the Eagles run a lot of these vertical routes. And that's perfect. You want to lay it to the outside. The receiver's got outside positioning. Just a great executed play there by the rookie and Donovan. And two big third and long completions by McNabb and this Eagles offense on this drive. Second and goal. Westbrook tries the right side, nowhere to go. And Demarcus Ware was back there to make the play a loss of two, and now it's third and goal. You know, it really is surprising to me the number of problems that Philadelphia has had down here in the red zone. We talked about it when they got down here before and got the touchdown with Donovan, but even last year they were not very good in the red zone, and that was a priority for them this past offseason that they knew they needed to get better, and they thought that they had some key guys with some size, Hank Basket, Jason Avant, that could make some plays, even Reggie Brown, but it just hasn't really happened for them. What'll it be on third and goal? Westbrook again at the bottom of your screen. McNabb underneath. Buckhalter. Touchdown.
17 to 3 Philadelphia. Anytime you see a coach and a linebacker looking at each other like that, you know that that means one thing confusion. And the Eagles have figured out the red zone problems in this game. Good job getting Buckhalter just out in the flat. A real simple play. And yet the Cowboys were unable to defense it. They split Westbrook out wide. They got Buckhalter in the game as well. Pretty easy stuff. Two minutes, three seconds left in a first half that, for the most part, has been dominated by the Philadelphia Eagles on both sides of the ball. You can tell right that Kevin Burnett and, and Wade Phillips discussing what exactly happened. And you know, you're right, Joe. I mean, when you get into a game like this, and, and touchdowns when you get down in there are so critically important. And the Eagles have been able to come away with those seven points the two times they've been down there. Jeffrey Lurie's got his playoff scruff going too. <laughs> Extends all the way up into the owner suite. There might be 66,000 sporting beards next week. <laughs> the Eagles trying to seize an opportunity. An opportunity that came their way because of the Chicago loss to the Texans and the Tampa Bay Buccaneers home loss to the Oakland Raiders. And now leading their divisional rival, the Dallas Cowboys. 14 points. Pac-Man Jones on the return. Needs a big one for Dallas. And he's out across the 35. Now the Eagles offense can stand on the sideline and watch their good defense go to work. There's a long list of people, not just players, that have a lot to prove here today by the Dallas Cowboys. Romo is on that list as this pass is broken up for Roy Williams by Sheldon Brown. Yeah, you go back and take a look at the, the scoring play. You're going to see Brian Westbrook here. He's going out, and the Cowboys are a little slow getting out to cover him with Ken Hamlin. But look at the confusion right in here as far as who's got who. And what ultimately happens then is Anthony Henry is then on Carell Buckhalter and it should have been Burnett the linebacker is what it looked like to me and so the confusion and it shouldn't have confused them it's a set that they run very often and they oftentimes split Brian Westbrook out wide Romo throws underneath to his favorite target Witten who bad knee and all fights his way for a Dallas first down what an effort by Jason Witten well, great effort by Jason Witten, and I'll tell you, a good job there by Philadelphia because Jason was trying to get out of bounds to stop the clock. And Akeem Jordan, he gets him, he holds him up, and then Quentin Michael pulls him back into the field of play, so the clock keeps running. Dallas has all three of their timeouts remaining as this pass is to Terrell Owens, who will hop out of bounds. Let's go down to the field and Pam Oliver. Well, Joe, you just talked about Jason Witten. We know how tough he is, but we're seeing just how tough he is. His ankle is not only sprained. Witten told me before the game that he has a slight ligament tear in that ankle. He blew it off as nothing serious. He doesn't expect to have any type of surgery after the season. But so far, you know, he's a warrior and he's playing like one. He is definitely on that list of the tough guys in this league. Well, the guy does it all. He's a coach's dream is what he is. Second and five for Dallas down by 14. This one to the sideline. Williams wasn't looking for it. Sheldon Brown with the interception. And Romo and Roy Williams were not on the same page. There is a flag down in the middle of the field. Holding offense, number 71, penalty is defined, first down. You know, Joe, I'm not sure what the route was, and I'm not real sure what the throw was. Nothing looked good. You're going to see Roy Williams on the outside, and he wasn't expecting the ball, obviously, but Romo was very indecisive, it looked to me, when he made the throw. I mean, he wants to go there, but it looked like he just wasn't real sure exactly what he was seeing or what Roy Williams was going to do, and therefore the ball was underthrown. And it's been a long time. It's been a long time since Sheldon Brown has been able to get an interception. His first in the last 20 games. 
The starting right corner for the Eagles and that interception stops that drive by the Cowboys and now an opportunity for the Eagles to add to their lead. They have two timeouts remaining and this pass is off the hands of Deshaun Jackson incomplete. So a drop by Jackson coming up on the Visa halftime report. Kurt, Terry, Howie, Michael, and Jimmy will have scores and highlights from around the league. And the Fox Sports ticker will keep you updated with up to the second stats. Tony Romo cannot get away from his 0-2 record in the playoffs. Cannot get away from his 5-7 record in December. More interceptions than touchdowns. And so far, one interception, no touchdowns in this game. And on second and ten, a run of one yard by Westbrook. And now 55 seconds remain, and a timeout is taken. You, know, you think about it, Joe, and Tony Romo now has gone to Roy Williams twice. One on a not very good, not a well-run route on the square end that Romo overthrew. And then he goes to him on that play, and you know, it didn't look like Roy Williams was doing anything where he expected the ball on that one. And I'm going to tell you as a quarterback I'd be real reluctant to go back to Roy Williams in this second half and so far the trade that brought Roy Williams to the Dallas Cowboys has been a bust well, I don't at least for this year you know I mean it, it's going to have to get a lot better in 09 third down and nine and McNabb throws and completes another big third down completion is Reggie Brown and then he gets thrown down out of bounds And the flag is for what happened after the play was over. Adam Pacman Jones threw him to the ground. Personal foul. Late hit out of bounds. Number 21. Half the distance to the goal. First down. And I think these are the types of plays that you worry about, Joe. They're in man coverage right now. You got Reggie Brown, who, who is out of bounds, and Pac-Man tries to you know, get rid of some frustration by just throwing him on the ground after he's out. You know, and players that make dumb plays over and over or do dumb things, at the end of the day, they're gonna hurt, they're gonna hurt your team in critical times. And that was one time there that certainly has hurt this defense. It sets up a first and 10 from the 14 yard line. And the Eagles now have had four conversions of third and seven or longer. McNabb with all day hits Buckhalter. He stays on his feet somehow. Play is alive and Buckhalter gets it back to the 18 yard line. Still lost yardage on the play. A four yard loss and now a player is slow to get up. That's Buckhalter. He pops up and Philadelphia will spend their final timeout with 31 seconds left. Roy Williams now and the two routes that Troy was talking about. This is the earlier one. Yeah, you're going to see. And Asante Samuel, remember, he cannot let Roy Williams run by him deep. And you see the route as how that is rounded off as he's running the square in. And when you do that, it opens the door really for the corner to jump it which is what Samuel did now there's the interception I don't know what happened there but Roy Williams was not expecting the ball and I, I don't maybe he was running the right route I'm not even sure but if he was you would certainly expect there to be a lot more urgency in that situation and Tony Romo clearly had no idea what it was he was doing and I'm not so sure that not a, I'm not excusing Tony Romo either I don't know that it's a ball that he should have let loose. So now Roy Williams is explaining himself on the sideline. Ray Sherman, the wide receivers coach, at second and 14. Westbrook at the bottom of your screen. Over the middle, he gets it. Right in front of the umpire. Gets away from Skandrick. And on second and 14, picks up five. 23 seconds remain, and again, the Eagles are out of timeouts. So now third down and nine. And Andy Reid has had his team ready for this game. The Dallas Cowboys do not look ready for this battle in Philadelphia. And now with a play clock winding down, Dallas has to take a timeout. 
twenty three seconds left. And it'll be third down and nine when play resumes. This has been I would say first of all for the Eagles they've dominated this first half of play and for the Dallas Cowboys they've looked confused at times and they have been rolled over here by the Eagles. Yeah and I thought the Eagles even if they didn't have a chance of getting into the playoffs I really felt that they were going to come into this ball game and play very very well. Now clearly a lot on the line. I, I think if you look at Dallas you know two acquisitions that they made that were going to make them a better team whether that's Roy Williams or whether that's Pac-Man Jones and here in this first half both those players with with key you know errors that have hurt their football team dramatically. And you think about Roy Williams, who was picked up in early October, has the same number of catches as Patrick Creighton and fewer yards. McNabb on third and nine in trouble, throws, and the pass is going to be a flag thrown as Terrence Newman never got his head around. Deshaun Jackson the intended receiver and that'll be pass interference against Terrence Newman yeah, and I think it's a good call I mean it's surprising Terrence Newman one of the better players interference, defense number 41 foul occurred in the end zone ball will be placed on the one yard line you see First that down. he never turns and really looks for the ball he shields Deshaun Jackson and then you see that Donovan McNabb sees that Newman's not looking and throws it Knowing that at worst, it's probably going to be an incompletion. A good job by Deshaun One. It's a good job by Donovan McNabb giving him an opportunity. But Deshaun Jackson staying alive and trying to make a play on it and not showing that the ball was coming until right before it arrived. So now what do you do? You have first and goal from the one. You have no timeouts remaining if you're Philadelphia. They fake the handoff throw. Touchdown, Selleck. First touchdown of the year for Brent Selleck. And the Eagles are three for three inside the red zone after coming in two for their last 12. And Jerry Jones doesn't know what hit him. And neither does Tony Romo or anyone else on that Cowboys sideline. They come down here, play fake it, and they get Selleck into the corner and, and just real simple. I mean, difficult to defend when you've got the run pass, which is what the Eagles have going here in this first half. But boy, they made that look easy. And they got some help. They got the help on the interception, clearly, that set this drive up. The 15 yard unsportsmanlike penalty on Pac Man Jones, and then the pass interference on Terrence Newman. And for Donovan McNabb, two touchdown passes, a touchdown run, all in this second quarter for a guy. With articles written today and a lot of conversation about this could very well be his last game as a Philadelphia Eagle. If it is, he certainly put together a heck of a first half. And he has made a pretty strong case for what he said during the week that he'd like to get a new deal done here with the Eagles, which in some regard is taken as he wants to get this situation brought to a head and either move on or get locked in here with the Philadelphia <laughs> Eagles. Yeah, and one is because he'd like a big signing bonus, and I understand that part of it, but then two, you know, I get it. He's tired of being asked for the last two years now, hey, are you going to come back? You know, what's going to happen? A new deal would eliminate all that conversation. Squib kick by Akers. Here is Pac-Man Jones. And Pac-Man loses the football. Has it ripped out and the Eagles take over. And with five seconds left, they'll have an opportunity for a field goal by David Akers. Well, David Akers, he's had some problems, I know, this year, but I was watching him kick 60 yarders in pregame warm up, so this is a chip shot. You see, the Eagles just stand Pac Man Jones up, and this is what they do. This is what all good defenses do. And. 
It's Quentin Dennis yeah, who ripped it out. Does a good job once he gets stood up of just ripping the ball out. Five seconds left in the half. And here is a 50 yard try by Akers. One for four from this distance this season. More points for the Eagles. Who lead it 27 to 3. Some smiles on the Dallas sideline prior to this game. Nobody's smiling now as you look at the numbers from a dominating first half by the Eagles over Dallas. And Wade Phillips has to wonder what's in the future with regard to this second half and what's in the future with regard to his job with this Dallas team if they don't play better than they did in that first half of play. Austin on the return from inside the five cannot make the 20. Considine on the tackle. Let's go down to the field and Pam Oliver. Hey there, Joe. Wade Phillips said uh, what you might expect. We need to play better. He also said that the, he feels like the Cowboys do have the stuff, though, to pull off a comeback. Meantime, Andy Reid says being a long shot to even make it to this point, he said that put a fire under my team. And as far as how they've been able to keep their heels on the Dallas Cowboys, he credits their pass-run ratio and also how well the defense is blitzing. Pam, thank you. We've seen Andy Reid a number of times turn to this crowd and implore them to make some noise. Down by 24, the Cowboys start at their 19. Quick throw to Creighton. Tackle made by Quentin Michael, a gain of three. You know, you'd like to stand here and say, well, we're going to find out what the Cowboys are all about, but we were saying that before this game started. You know, but I do think that Dallas right now is going to get into more of a hurry up mode. It's all about getting snaps. How many snaps can they rattle off? And I know that this team offensively can get dangerous when they're in that can't lose mentality. So can Philly though when they expect a team to drop back and throw the rest of this game. Jim Johnson is at his best. Instead, it's an inside handoff to to shard choice, and he picks up 11. Bunkley downfield to make the tackle. No, you're right, and I think that that's why running the football there, you know, was a nice play for Dallas. I mean, it's easy when you're down 24 points to all of a sudden get into this mentality that we have to throw on every down, and that would be playing right into the hands of Philadelphia. Jim Johnson, as well as anybody in the league, is a defensive coordinator. He'll have those guys coming and getting after Romo. On first down, it's Choice out of the backfield and out of bounds at the 41. You saw a shot of Pat McQuiston, big number 77, who backs up a tackle. He's playing in left guard in place of Corey Proctor, who has struggled when he's been in there. Don't know. And that answers the question. I was going to say maybe he's injured. It looks like just because he's been ineffective. Well, he has been, you know, relatively ineffective. I mean, he's done okay coming in and playing, as you said earlier, but they were a better offensive line when Montre Holland stepped back in, and now they're just trying to get another body in there and see if that won't help. Handoff on second down, and Choice is brought down right at the marker. And we will see if it's enough for a first down. Instead, we're going to have a measurement as the Eagles outscored the Cowboys 17 to nothing in the last two minutes, three seconds of that first half. And 24 unanswered points in the last 12 plus minutes. And somehow, Tony Romo is able to smile down there on that field as. He's in conversation waiting for the measurement. And just short. Third and inches. Well, I do think that this is a critical possession for Dallas. If they're able to move the football and come away with any kind of points, I think then clearly they they view that as something very positive if if Philadelphia was able to make a key stop here on this possession not necessarily on this play and get the ball and if they go down and get any kind of points after that 
it would be extremely difficult for Dallas to claw their way back in. Third down in inches. Quick throw to Terrell Owens, incomplete. It skips into Terrell Owens. You know, they're faced with a decision right now, but I, I, I don't know that there really is a decision. You see Tony Romo initially looked like they were going to bring out the punt team, and, and here they come. And I, I just think that for the Cowboys, they have to go for it here on fourth down. But the punt team was sent onto the field, and I think the only person that sent him off the field was Romo. I think Wade Phillips was hoping to keep his punt team out there, and Romo <laughs> said, get off the field. And then Romo picks up the first down. I mean, who's running the show down there? Well, that's debatable. Let's go! Good. But a first Let's down go, for Dallas, so Tony Romo just Let's took go. it himself. Here's Romo. The punt team, they're kind of on the field. Now they're all on the field, and Tony Romo is telling them to get off. Wade Phillips had a look of confusion on his face, and then Romo just took the snap and plowed forward for a first down. And Romo keeps the play alive. Got away from Cole, and now throws to Witten. He throws down the field for Owens. And Terrell Owens stays on his feet and is down inside the 15. What a play that was almost blown up at the beginning by Trent Cole. Well, everything looked legal, but you got Andy Reid out on the field right now trying to get an official's attention. And it looked like he may try to throw the red flag to get that challenge, but he's not reaching for it. Romo, that was a backward pass there. And they're able to get the ball down the field then to Terrell Owens. Everything looked like it was okay to me. First down for Dallas after the 42 yard play which followed the fourth and inches and now Flozell Adams with his ninth false Ball start. start offense number 76 five yard penalty first down let's go back to that play the line of scrimmage is the blue line and clearly it was a backward pass to Witten and then down the field to Terrell Owens who did a nice job to get the most out of it. Yeah, really good discipline there by Jason Witten just staying back behind Tony Romo even after he got flushed out of the pocket. And then being able to deliver the ball down the field to Owens. First and 15. And the Cowboys just are not in sync from time to time. Romo's going one place and the receivers are going another. Yeah, and that time Tony Romo was signaling to Terrell Owens that he expected him to to go into the flat or hook up and instead Owens just kept going to the end zone. Philadelphia Eagles sideline was calling for intentional grounding because there literally was no one around where that ball fell to the grass for Dallas. Second and 15. Another blitz from the Eagles and knocked out of the hand by Dawkins fumbled by Romo down the field Clemens a stiff arm and a touchdown Some time, and then you see the strip. And Chris Clemens is able to pick it up after Dawkins knocks it out. <laughs> and it's a foot race between him and Mark Colombo. But Choice had a chance there at the end to bring him to the ground also and was unable to do so. Just great, great defensive play by a lot of people on that one. Boy, Clemens can run. You think? <laughs> 6 2, 240, and he flew down the field and gave a stiff arm to Tashar Choice. How about Chris Clemens? 
A 73 yard fumble return for a touchdown. We're almost turned it over a couple of times. Interception by Sheldon Brown. Now the fumble forced by Brian Dawkins playing in his 183rd career game most ever by a Philadelphia Eagle. A free agent to be. And a Pro Bowl. Austin on the return. They're bringing out all the tricks and that's a live ball as Pac-Man Jones has had a horrendous game is back at the 10. Let's go back to the touchdown and the return by Chris Clemens. Yeah, and watch Brian Dawkins and where he comes from. He comes from here. Now, there's not enough blockers to pick him up, and Tony Romo has to know this. Deshard Choice gets one, but because he's trying to buy time, Dawkins strips him. And then they get a good bounce to where it goes right up into Clemens' hands. But, you know, when you're down, I understand what Tony's trying to do. He's trying to make a play and get it down the field. But that was not on the offensive line. I think Brian Dawkins is going to be back next year. <laughs> it looks like they all will the way oh. they're playing right now. 31 unanswered points put up by the Eagles. Romo buys time, hits Patrick Creighton, who has a lot of room to run. Gets behind Bradley, the middle linebacker, and Akeem Jordan makes the play. 22-yard catch and run. Well, the NFC playoff picture is pretty crystal clear right now. You've got the four divisional leaders. Giants are the number one seed. The Carolina Panthers, the number two seed, followed by the Vikings and Cardinals. The wild card teams at the moment. Atlanta has clinched a spot. And Philadelphia, with a win here, would leapfrog the Cowboys and be the number six seed as Terrell Owens makes the catch at the 40. Well, what you see right now, and, and the right thing is. Jim Johnson knows that the last thing they can do is give up a big play or give up easy points. So they're playing very, very soft, making Tony Romo come underneath, hit the easy passes. The Cowboys may collect a lot of yardage here in the second half offensively, but it's going to be because the Eagles are going to let them have some things uncontested. Second and three, and that's broken up by Quentin Michael as he got his right hand in front of Jason Witt. Tell you what a great find they have in him. Quentin Michael, the starter this year for the first time, and a lot of people thought that he was worthy of being voted into the Pro Bowl and probably will be next year, but a free agent and a guy who's been just outstanding. In fact, Jim Johnson said that he's probably been their defensive MVP. It's now third and three. We're not going to see any punts. So two downs to get three yards for Dallas. As Barber carries it, Jordan cannot bring him down before Barber picks up four and a Dallas first down. Marion Barber, who since he was hurt against Seattle on Thanksgiving, didn't play at Pittsburgh, had eight carries, two yards against the Giants, two carries, no yards. Last week against the Ravens. Looks a little better here in this one. That's out of the reach of Witten. Yeah, you talk about Marion Barber, and you just you just wonder how his year would have been a little different if a guy like Felix Jones had stayed healthy. You know, Marion Barber, as most people know, was not the starter a year ago. That was Julius Jones, and then this year he's been carrying the bulk of the load, but that would not have been the case if Felix Jones, the rookie out of Arkansas, hadn't have been injured so early in the season and I, I just think the wear and tear on Marion Barber has had a real impact on him saw that record for Dallas since 2000 0 and 8 in the regular season finale Romo gets away from Parker and now we'll try and pick up a couple of extra yards as he got around to Santi Samuel a gain of eight and a half. The numbers for the Dallas Cowboys overall are not good in December and January since 1997. 
And for Tony Romo, since he took over as a starter, the sub 500 record. And has really struggled, whereas in the first three months of the season, he has been one of the best in the NFL. Romo down the sideline for Owens. Good throw. Catch is made, and it's inbounds. Good throw to get it to Terrell Owens, 35 yards around Asante Samuel. Yeah, they just ran Terrell Owens on a go route, and he's able to get position there on, a Sam, on Asante Samuel and, and a perfectly thrown ball by Romo. You know, this is one of the big plays. They, they know, the Eagles do, certainly, that in order for the Cowboys, they cannot just methodically drive the ball down the field. They'll run out of time before they're able to put enough points on the board. They need big chunks like they just got. A blitz, Marion Barber loses the football. Jose Leo Hansen on the return. Only Romo can get close to him. It's another defensive touchdown. Dawkins stripped another. The party started a while ago, but if it didn't, it sure has now. And that party has been led by number 20. Brian Dawkins has forced two fumbles that have been turned into touchdowns. The last one by Joselio Hansen. Three. 41 to 3, Philadelphia leading with 8 11 left in the third quarter. Pac Man Jones on another return. Out to the 30. And I don't think he's going to take his foot off the gas either. Neither will Jim Johnson. You wouldn't expect as Roy Williams can't make the catch. Not only did the Dallas Cowboys lock Roy Williams into a long, expensive deal, but they gave up a lot to get him. A first and a third round pick at the top of that trade to Detroit. A lot to give up, and you know, you feel like you've seen enough of him when he was at Detroit to warrant giving up. You know that much compensation now they haven't seen it pay any dividends here for the Cowboys. Romo's in trouble again. Clemens up his back knocks it out. Trevor Laws on the fumble recovery. We've seen this act before. I mean, it's just Tony trying to make a play and then just not understanding that there's pressure behind him and Clemens being able to knock it out. And it goes back to what we talked about early in this game, Joe, that, you know, the winner of this game was going to be who made the fewest bad plays. And, and <laughs> there's been a lot of them to choose from as far as Dallas is concerned. Chris Clemens was getting IV, an IV fluid packet, halftime in the locker room. Wasn't even out on the field for the start of the second half with the kickoff. Has a fumble return for a touchdown. And now this one for Reggie Brown is incomplete, which kind of plays into what's going on here with Dallas. As you watch Coral Buckhalter hit the hole hard. Brought down by Newman, a gain of nine. You've got a Miami team that has Bill Parcells calling the shots and Tony Sperano, who was the offensive line coach with the Dallas Cowboys, his head coach, doing a brilliant job. Yeah, and I think Dallas misses both of those guys. And, uh, you know, Bill Parcells, what he was able to do in the time that he was with Dallas, built this team into a contender. Tony Sperano, who had been the offensive coordinator prior to Jason Garrett taking over last year, but I think that they do miss a coach like Tony Sperano, and they 
Both Parcells and Sperano have done a great job for that Miami organization. Corral Buckhalter, Ken Hamlin makes a play off the edge. And Buckhalter is brought down short of first down yardage. And I think that's probably, Joe, what's got to be the most frustrating part for Jerry Jones. In that you're talking about a Miami team that had won one game all of last year. Nobody expected anything from them. And then you've got a Cowboy team that most people were picking to go to the Super Bowl. And that was based on the fact that many, and I still think a lot of people still believe that this is the most talented football team in the NFL. But as we all know, talented teams don't always win championships. The team part of it could be questioned. There, no doubt there are a lot of talented individuals on this Dallas Cowboy Club. Akers hits from 41. Eagles have outscored Dallas 41 to nothing in the last 21 plus minutes. The offense for the Cowboys, even when they've been able to move the ball and have gotten the ball into the red zone of the Eagles, have turned it over twice and have led directly to two Eagle touchdowns. Defensive scores as Miles Austin. Returns the kick out to the 25. And there's a story to be told down on that Dallas sideline. A lot of frustration. Tank Johnson is letting some of his frustration out with what has transpired here in this game. <laughs> well, there's been a lot of players for Dallas letting frustration out over the last several weeks. And I think that's part of the reason why they're not playing to the level that their talent would warrant. You know, I said a little bit earlier that the most talented team doesn't always win championships. More importantly, the most talented team isn't always a team. First down at their own 25. The Eagles still coming after Romo, and the pass is caught by Witten, who gets crunched. By Stuart Bradley, a gain of seven. Yeah, I think for Philadelphia right now, I mean, you look at this score, 41 point lead that, you know, I would expect them to maybe start resting some players because they have now, they now have that luxury knowing that they're going to be playing next week on the road to use this as somewhat of a buy, at least in the second half. But, you know, these players, they're having too much fun. I mean, these are the games you want to be a part of. Second and three, and now Terrell Owens with a drop right off his hands. This crowd will love that. Yeah, they've been showering him with a lot of noise every time that he's anywhere near the ball and when it's being thrown to him. And, you know, obviously a ball that should have been caught. They teach him young here in Philadelphia. Third down and three, and this one's nearly picked off by Bradley as he stepped in front of Jason Witten. And now on fourth down just to try and restore some order to this game. The Cowboys send the punt team on. Yeah, you know, they just they recognize that this is a losing battle, and you know, what's the point? You know, they can run up 60 points if they if they kept going for it on fourth down right now. And so then you ask the question, you know, how much how much longer is Dallas going to keep a guy like Tony Romo in the lineup? I mean, he's got a long offseason, a lot longer after this game ends than what he had, had anticipated. Valescu hits it. And Deshaun Jackson stays away. Rolls to a stop at the 21. Next Sunday, we will have the NFC wildcard matchup. We're not sure of what that matchup will be, but at the moment, we don't know which one we're going to televise, but we do know that if Philadelphia wins, they're at Minnesota next weekend, and Atlanta's at Arizona. And off is to Buckhalter. Picks I like, up two. I, I, I like that. So you're still saying if Philadelphia wins. Well, I don't know. I've been... I'm not the savvy old veteran, but I, <laughs> yeah, okay. I just refuse to fall into that trap. Although, just so you know, numbers-wise, 
if the Dallas Cowboys are able to come back in this game and it'll be the greatest comeback and be. win statistic ever <laughs> ever <laughs> It off to Selleck, who's had a nice day. In place of the injured LJ Smith. And Selleck has a first down, and Brian Dawkins is going to leave the field and I guess get looked at. Yeah, go take a break and drink some water and put his feet up, and you know, he's done it all. You know, as I said, you know, Andy Reid, he hasn't taken his foot off the gas. I mean, they're still rolling out and throwing the football and you know, while these guys are out there, they're going to throw and, and do what do what Andy Reid does. And I would be surprised if maybe after the series we don't see some out of Kevin Cobb. You know, for him to get a chance to play and maybe do a little better than what we've seen of him. Hand off to Buckhalter. I'd be shocked if we see any more Brian Westbrook in this game. I mean, you talk about a guy that your offense revolves around. And if we do, I would put that in the category of a mistake. I mean, I'm with you. This is to the point now where Andy Reid, whether it's McNabb or whoever, can start to look ahead to next week. No doubt, because I, you know, hey, in talking with Andy the other day, as I said to him, I mean, you got to feel pretty confident that if for some, if some way you're able to get into the playoffs, this team, this team can play with any one of them. You know, they just beat the Giants a few weeks ago. Right now, the number one seed. That was at New York. Here's Buckhalter. You talk about terrible tackling. The Dallas Cowboys have not seemed to have any desire to make tackles the last couple of weeks, whether it was against the Ravens or now here against the Eagles. Trey Battle makes the stop after a 33 yard run. And Buckhalter's had a nice game. Yeah, he has. It's good to see him playing. You know, after what he went through earlier in his career and missing three seasons because of knee injuries, it was about over before it ever even got started. And right now, I mean, when the score is what it is, but I think even from when this game started, Joe, watching the two teams, the Eagles just seemed like they had more fire and a more of a want to than what Dallas had. And I hate to say that because I think in a lot of ways it's unfair, but that's what I saw watching these two teams right from the start. I can't believe that Brian Westbrook is going to carry the ball, but he is in a 41 point game. And there are Philadelphia Eagle fans that have to be holding their breath. I mean, what, what is there to gain out of this except, I mean, Westbrook knows what he's doing, and it's time to put him, who's gone through a long year, not a big bodied guy, he's missed two games because of injuries, put him away on the sideline. Yeah, I know, I agree. I agree, and I, I think that. Right now I would have to say that that Andy's going to try to put 50 points on the board and and I would have to believe that even at that point that Donovan McNabb will be done because they're not going to go very far with either one of those guys not healthy. Second down and five and Buckhalter brought down a little short of first down yardage by Greg Ellis. Now this is such a funny game sports in general. I mean we came in and you start thinking about the Philadelphia side and so much written about Andy Reid. Maybe he'll have enough at the end of this season and say goodbye or Donovan McNabb. Maybe that combination isn't going to continue past 2008. And he's not waving goodbye yet. No, he <laughs> and then you've he's got signaling the, something into the offense. You've got Runyon and Trey Thomas, the two offensive tackles who are without deals past this year. Brian Dawkins. And yet how can the Eagles as an organization look at what's happened here today in their biggest game of the year with what they have done against their longtime divisional rival the Dallas Cowboys as anything but a vote of confidence for all of these players to continue on with the Eagles. Yeah but I what I you know with that in mind Joe I, and the Eagles have done a good job of that over the years and it's why they've been as consistent as what they have been. They they can't make emotional decisions or they can't allow emotion to come into these decisions that they're about to make. And you know I do think that some of the players you mentioned should be back will be back. But I think there's going to be some hard decisions to make on some of these players and but I'm, I'm confident in this organization in making the right ones. It's fourth down and two for Philadelphia and a 40 yard try now from Akers. 
who is three for three and has only missed three field goals in his career against Dallas. And this one is wide left. So it remains 44 to 3. So Akers, three out of four on the day, and there have been five Philadelphia takeaways, 27 points off those takeaways. Throws and it's nearly intercepted by Sheldon Brown, who had gone 19 games without a pick and almost came away with his second of this game. Well, you talk about the Dallas Cowboys, Joe, and where they have been all week long, those in the press, and talking about the struggles that this team has had or that Tony Romo has had. And I don't think that the Cowboys, this current team, really cares about what happened maybe 10 years ago, but I do think they care about what's happened over the last two or three years. And the team has not played well when it has mattered down the stretch. And even though the players have not acknowledged it or have tried to dismiss it, I think that pressure is very, very real. And now it's only going to continue. Romo is flushed out of the pocket and he just throws it away. Well, I, I agree with you with what you said about Philadelphia. They have been always very good not making the emotional decision, whether it was Hugh Douglas or Deuce Staley, whatever they've done over the years. They've been very good at cutting ties at the right time. It's unrealistic to think all those players are going to come back. That's not the nature of the National Football League. But on the other side, I mean, it, it all has to be on the board for owner Jerry Jones. When you consider a guy who mortgaged everything to buy the Cowboys in 1989, he's going to come out of this game furious and with that cryptic vote of confidence for Wade Phillips. Our coaches are in place. I, I think it's all on the table after what's happened here in Philadelphia this evening. No doubt. is complete to Roy Williams just his second catch of this game go Kong on the tackle a gain of eight and it will be fourth down to bring Sam Paulescu back onto the field and Wade Phillips won 12 of his first 13 games as the head coach of the Dallas Cowboys and he's about to go 10 and 10 since including the postseason Lost last year at home to the New York Giants. Valescu hits it. Deshaun Jackson with a fair catch. Tony Romo's December record about to go to five and eight and for the Cowboys this December after so much talk going into that rough schedule They'll be one and three at the end of this month Game at Pittsburgh the home games against the Giants and the Ravens and now this road game against Philly Hand off to Buckhalter And he gained half a yard to Marcus Ware on the tackle and it would be obvious by now as Terrell Owens has been shaking out that hand during the commercial break that DeMarcus Ware is going to come up short of the single season sack record. What a year he's had. 20 sacks. He's played hurt. Hyperextended left knee. Played through that the week after Thanksgiving. 20 sacks on the season to this point. How much more are the Eagles going to throw the ball up by 41? Maybe not at all as Buckhalter carries it over the right side game three. And I think to follow up on that Joe I think it goes back to a conversation I had this week with with corner Terrence Newman and, and you know what happens if this Cowboy team doesn't make it to the playoffs. He said everything's for not. Well DeMarcus Ware's sacks are for not. The signing of Tony Romo you know and what they paid him is for not. The signing of Roy Williams and Terrell you know all, all the things all the steps that were put in place for this team to be successful this year and then into the future for this season anyway is for not. I mean a lot of money was spent signing bonuses in order to give this team a chance. Unfathomable to think that this team 
Won't even make it into postseason play. Quick throw to Reggie Brown, broken up by Mike Jenkins. And it's fourth down. And in case you're wondering, the largest margin of victory in this series between the Eagles and Cowboys 36 points. The Eagles won 43 to 7. The second game of this series in 1961. The Cowboys came in in 1960. Jones waiting for it. And he is just dragged down by Omar Gaither. And while the Eagles have put up 44, the other side of it is Dallas has scored only three. A toss to Tashard Choice. Brought down by Considine after a gain of four. You know, I think we really need to give some credit to Andy Reid and the staff and the job that they've done, Joe. I mean, you think about the way the year got going and the struggles they had there in the stretch, and you know, we all know what happened then with Donovan McNabb, but this staff has been together a long time. And yeah, they've had some guys that have left and gone on elsewhere. Brad Childers, head coach there in Minnesota, but it's a group that's been together a long time, and they've really done a good job this year. There's no doubt as Witten makes a catch, it's enough for a first down. I, I think you can make a strong case that the most important signing Andy Reid has made in his 10 years with the Philadelphia Eagles is when he locked in defensive coordinator Jim Johnson. Yeah, I, I agree with that completely. And you know, having played against Jim Johnson as a quarterback and knowing what he's about, and and, and I like that, you know, Andy as an offensive guy recognized that Jim Johnson creates problems for an offense. He had been with Indianapolis, and I mean that was the guy he wanted right from the beginning, and, and it's been a it's really been a great marriage between the two. Four-man rush in the pass is complete to Terrell Owens. And he does not have enough for a first down, a gain of nine. You know, how many times have we seen this Eagle organization over the years? And even last year, I mean, you could argue that that last year was maybe Andy's best job of coaching, you know, to take that team when they were struggling and then have them playing as hard as they were at the end of last year. And it seems that that's just what this team's about under Andy Reid. You know, they struggle and then they they get it going then at the last half of the year. Yeah, this is a team that knows how to finish a season as opposed to the Cowboys. We talked about their struggles in December. Andy Reid within the division is 13 and 5 in his coaching career against the NFC East in December. And he's now 6 and 0 oh if you count this game against the Dallas Cowboys. Well, he's knowing how to finish. Yeah, and, and he knows what it takes, and he knows what it takes in, in big games. I mean, he's been in enough of them. Choice gets the handoff. Jordan on the tackle, a gain of 18. And I say all that after the debacle that they had last week, you know, in Washington when they controlled, you know, their destiny, and who would have thought they would have gone out and played the way that they did. But I think if you look at, you know, at least four of the last five games, this team, this team really is playing as well as anybody in the league right now. Choice. Room to run through this defense. The umpire is glad to get out of the way. My halfway it depends on the spot. Sorry, Looks Joe. like you got enough for first down. Yes, sir. Go ahead. Well, no, I, I, I was just going to say I halfway expect the ball to come bouncing out and see some guy in a in a green jersey darting down the field about 80 yards. Well, the funny thing is, not only are the Eagles three for three in the Dallas red zone, last couple of times the Cowboys have gotten into the Eagles red zone, the Eagles have turned it into touchdowns. And now, Darren Howard just rips Tony Romo to the ground. A loss of seven with that sack. Well, when you get into these types of games and the Eagles are able to bring bring the pressure and puts a lot of strain then on those offensive linemen to try to hold up in pass protection and yeah he corralled him pretty good. I don't know who's enjoying this more right now the the Eagle players or these Eagle fans. Well I know that these Eagle players considering how their day started not knowing if this game would mean anything for them other than the chance to drag the Cowboys out of the playoff picture as Romo throws and nobody's there again. Well that's happened a lot the last few weeks and now they're going to throw a flag for intentional grounding. He was in the pocket. 
Intentional grounding, quarterback. Also loss of down, third down. It, it, it's really pretty remarkable, Joe. I mean, there's only one other game that I can think of anyway when in a, in a game, a, a very meaningful game where a team just really did not show up. And that was when the Giants and the Vikings were playing, I believe it was a 2000 season in the, in the NFC Conference Championship game. And everyone thought Minnesota was going to come in and blow them out. And it was the opposite. The Giants won 44 to nothing, I believe. But it's the only other game that comes to mind when I think about a really significant, important ball game and one team just right from the start never showed up. And on third and 27, a screen to Marion Barber, who's brought down from behind by Howard. And if we continue with that theme, I mean, specifically talking, the play of Tony Romo in particular, and not being on the same page with whether it was Witten in the Pittsburgh Steeler game or it was different receivers even today, offensively totally out of sync. For the most part, pretty good against the Giants in their one win in December. But the other big games, they have not gotten a role going at all. Yeah, I would agree. I mean, I, I don't think Tony has played well. I think Tony would be the first guy to tell you that he hasn't played as well as what, as what he's capable of or as well as what he expected. Having said that, I think there were a lot of other problems out here today. Eagles are about to get the football back. Quentin Demps is the only one back for Philadelphia as the Eagles half expect an onside try. But it's a regular kickoff and here's the return by the rookie Demps. There's nowhere to go. There was no blocking in front of him. And he's wrapped up around the 10. Kevin Cobb has taken over at quarterback. 17 for 34 this season, 144 yards. Hands off to Kyle Eckel. And Eckel picks up two. Cobb, no touchdowns, four interceptions on the season in relief of Donovan McNabb, who, by the way, set a new career high and a single season passing record for the Eagles with 3,916 passing yards here in 08. Well, he said this week that. He had played great this year. That raised some eyebrows around <laughs> Philadelphia. There, well, there was some not so great play that led to his benching in that yeah. Baltimore game at the half, but they've won well, now four or five since. Yeah, and I, I Donovan, I'm, I'm, I'm kidding. Donovan has had a really good year. I, I don't know that I would say a great year. Here's Eckel. But I almost sense that that he was saying it sarcastically just because of the way the year has gone with him, maybe with the local media. On third down, Eckel loses four. Play was made by Ratliff, a pro bowler, and it's fourth down. You know, we talked a little bit about it earlier and then last week as well. And, and you know, sometimes it's hard to, sometimes you get used to players, you get used to coaches, and, and people in Philadelphia have grown accustomed to Donovan and Andy Reid. And, you know, you just want to see change just for the sake of change. And, and I think you always got to be careful on what, what it is you wish for. Andy Reid, I think, is, is a heck of a football coach, certainly one of the top head coaches in the league. And I still believe Donovan McNabb is one of the top quarterbacks in the league. There's no doubt. As Pac-Man Jones is hit and dropped by Demps. The Dallas Cowboys offense down by... 38. Well, the, uh, the only thing that's going to be longer and more painful is the next six months. Here is a toss to Choice, and there's just nowhere to go. Third pick of the day, Kurt and Brett came in with one touchdown, six interceptions in his last four games. Well, and some people in Green Bay would tell you that that's why they didn't want him back in Green Bay was because in some of those games like that and in playoff games, Brett did not play well and he hurt his team and he cost them a lot of games. So despite that start as the pass is complete to Martellus Bennett by the New York Jets despite that start of eight and three they could finish the season one and four and both Aaron Rodgers and Brett Favre will be out of the playoffs come January. Third down and three here for Dallas. Yeah, I don't know which team more was expected from going into the season. You know, probably, I would probably say the New York Jets because they got Brett Favre, whereas the 
the Packers, even though they were 13 and three a year ago, went to the championship game. They lost Brett Favre. Bollinger is swallowed up by Clemens, who's had a fantastic day. And they just keep adding to the defensive statistics to put a smile on the face of their coordinator, Jim Johnson. I tell you, and I, I like Chris Clemens, too, and getting ready for this game and seeing some of the games that he had played prior to today. He's a very versatile, athletic guy, and, and if anybody questioned that, all they had to do then was see his fumble return for a touchdown. You know, I'll go back to, as we see Jeff Lurie, he's celebrating. I'll go back to how it's shaping up well for the Eagles in the playoffs. I mean, if they are able to get past Minnesota, then they're going to be playing at the Meadowlands against the Giants, and you know, clearly a team that they, each team knows, very, very well, but I don't think Philadelphia would go into the Meadowlands thinking they didn't have a chance. Pulescu hit a good punt. <laughs> Out of bounds at the two. Well, they got something to write happy home about, about, right? Well, I, you also have the Brad Childress factor. You know, the former offensive coordinator here with Andy Reid and the Philadelphia Eagles now finally getting the Vikings their first divisional championship since 2000. And that will be one of the two matchups. The other one, as you look at what's coming up, the OT presented by Lowe's right after the game. The other matchup is really interesting because you've got an Arizona team that got off to that fast start. They're winning last time I looked at the scores. And we're winning big at home against Seattle. But they've really stumbled down the stretch. And now that game's a little tighter, 31-21, against an Atlanta team. Troy that was four and twelve a year ago hand the reins over to Mike Smith the new head coach and the football over to Matt Ryan and here they are they almost won the division well I got to tell you what I've seen of Matt Ryan uh, the Atlanta Falcons I think they're going to be around a while you know I mean when you look at the Philadelphia Eagles you know Jeff Lurie and bringing in Donovan McNabb or you think of the Indianapolis Colts and Peyton Manning I mean when you've got a guy who you can start building things around and they thought they had that guy in Michael Vick, but they now have it, and they know they have it in Matt Ryan. I think the, the Atlanta Falcons are going to be around a while. They are the number five seed. The Eagles will be the number six seed as Echo bounces off a tackle. Comes up a yard shy of a first down, then kicks his legs into the gut of Brady James, and we are fast approaching the two minute warning and when you talked about Andy Reid Troy this will now be the seventh time he has taken the Eagles into the playoffs in 10 years as the head coach here in Philadelphia. Well I thought it was crazy that there were some thinking that maybe Andy Reid's job was at risk if he didn't win this game. I, I don't think I'd be shocked if that ever entered Jeff Lurie's mind. Asante Samuel who was handed big dollars by Jeffrey Lurie coming into this season celebrating. <laughs> Jeffrey, he's got his beard going too. You. I mean, it's there. The scruff is there. Third down and one. And a first down carry by Kyle Eckel, who won't go down. They call him the Admiral. Went to the Naval Academy, and we're under two to play. So while we heap the bouquets on the Philadelphia Eagles, this has to go down, and it's been talked about a lot, but it's here now as the most disappointing. Dallas Cowboys team maybe in their franchise history it's certainly the most expensive and with this franchise moving into a new high dollar stadium next year there was a lot on the line for this organization they stumbled down the stretch one and three in December and they will finish out of the playoffs that one and 15 was pretty disappointing in 89 but <laughs> I would agree I, just mean I, for the I, know, I, know, I know exactly what you're saying and yeah, I, I agree. I agree completely. I mean, there is no way anybody would have thought that the Cowboys would not make it to the playoffs. And, and even I think that they would have viewed this as a huge disappointment if they didn't even make it to the Super Bowl. And so to, to be given life after a disappointing loss last week and not then show up in this game, if you will, uh, pretty disappointing, no doubt. So coming up on 40 seconds left and there'll be one more snap and that will be it. We'll have bonus coverage coming of the Arizona Seattle game Arizona playoff team they'll go in as the number four seed and Andy Reid's Philadelphia Eagles it happened. How many Eagles players Andy Reid 
Eagle fans woke up today and thought, you know what, we've got a shot at this thing. They needed everything to break right. It did.